Uh, the problem with this presupposition was the apologetic. It's not an argument, it's an apologetic, and it's an attack. It's I guess if I had to describe myself, I might describe myself as an intellectual and as thief. Okay, well, I've, I've got an argument here. And it's like, oh, okay, well, let's hear it. And it's like, well, let me ask you this. <laughs> it's like, we need to get to your presupposition. Somebody who is maybe devoted to uh, pursuing aesthetic pleasure. Do I have presuppositions? Is it necessary that I have presuppositions? Is it the case that I must have presuppositions? Um, and and I, get, I get the trick. I get the rabbit holes. Uh, this thing is going to be, I think, the... I got to run. Come to the concert. I have to go to class. Oh, you have to go to class. Well, I, I timed it so that I'd be sure to get here on time. But I made it without much time to spare. I gotta go get some lunch, I think. Well, my name is Jack, Jack Angstreich. I go to films, go to lectures, concerts, sit in on classes, go to the theater, opera, ballet. You know, I'm not really sure. I think I probably see at least 300 a year right now, but it might be, it might be more. Well, I have a, a modest income from some investments. There are all kinds of different ways to get into things for free or at a discount and stuff like that. So and it doesn't end up costing that much, really. So if I spent my time doing the things that most people do, which would be, you know, working and having children and taking their kids to baseball games, you know, I would just be missing out on these things that I'm very passionately interested to know about or to experience, you know. Uh, how we just, met? Oh, I, I remember how. Well, so, so I know yeah, that you know, I mean, Bill and you were going to the Guggenheim to a Fellini series. Yeah, he right? was sitting, and he he was had sitting a, next to me. He was sitting next to you and you had, he had a Fellini book. No, I had a Fellini book. Oh, you had a Fellini book. Yeah, because yeah, I, I think I talked to you right after talking to Bill. It wasn't like I'd known him for a while. I oughtn't, I oughtn't do this on camera, but, because if this gets out. What do you think will happen? <laughs> Who knows? I'm sure this is not some. I'm sure if security knew that I did this, they wouldn't be. They wouldn't be happy. <laughs> it's kind of like a gift. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Tree of life shots. Why is that a tree of life shot? There's a lot of low angle shots. Yeah, but well, why is that? Yeah, but why it has the, to do with a child's point of view. Though. Yeah, but why? Uh... Oh, that's right. Those scenes in Sean Penn when he's out in that. You know that. The building, paper. yeah. I think you're gonna need to put pal talk away. We're not listening. Uh, so, what do you want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? The question got posed with Barbara whether I would like rescue her from a fire. It was kind of like, well, for the searchers, you know, if it was the only print <laughs> left of the searchers. Like you often do this, actually. Yeah. Like, well, it's like, like sometimes yeah. I want to sort of like, understand what the I might is. rescue you over, you know, the last print of. The gang's all here, you know, yeah. but for the searchers, it was the only existing print of the searchers. <laughs> you know, it would be a tough decision. You know? 
you know, like, I mean, I, I don't think you would do, I think you would actually say Barbara. I think you're very attached to Barbara. Yeah, and you I would, would say Barbara, Barbara but over the thing almost is, it's everything. It's not as though I wouldn't but, feel regret. No, no, but, but you would feel regret about the, sacrifice, the sacrificing of that film. Yeah, like, oh. yeah, well, Fred tells this story about some city, maybe a medieval city, that was being attacked, and they actually had these, like, great artworks, like, Durs or something yeah. that they lowered outside the. They lowered uh, uh, over the city walls so that the enemies wouldn't attack because they wouldn't want to destroy. Oh, the enemies destroying. respected the door. Yeah, would respect the artwork. That's some surprise. And Fred said that he thought that maybe he was against them doing that. It's easy to portray all these things as extreme views, and yet you know, even like the seeing the the amount of films that Jack sees, right? It seems very extreme uh, to say even that he goes, let's say, to the movie theater. Or even if you just said, like, I, well, I see, like, you know, 300 movies a year, someone right. would be like, oh, that's really extreme. Yeah. And yet, people certainly would not make a documentary about someone who watches the equivalent TV at home right, that's for the true. year. Right? And, like, in some ways, that's, that's actually more shocking. That, that, right. that, that should be more shocking. That should be some more way. shocking, yeah. so shocking that someone would be motivated to sort of do that at home and watch something that's probably less fulfilling in the long run. But yet, like, you know, so it really just has to do with sort of these, like, sort of superficial norms about what's shocking, what's not. Yeah, things going to start in... Uh, what? What thing? Concert. i got to go. Uh, you're going to need to sanitize this, Jack. Oh, yeah. This tells me all the Juilliard concerts and uh, events, recitals. Oh no. Tomorrow is Juilliard Singers at one. I have a kind of obsessive personality. It goes back a really long way. Like. Somehow when I was a kid, I got obsessed with geography. That's the first obsession I really remember having. And I used to like, when we would go away on vacation, I would be sure to pack an atlas. Because um, I always just wanted to like study the atlas um, in my spare time. So I, I made sure that I always had an atlas with me. And like I would come home from school and watch cartoons. And then during commercials, I would study the atlas. No, I have to plan my... Three comrades. Oh. Those three comrades on 29. It's not even in here. Three comrades. Must be a Turkish movie. never want to be thirsty during a movie. It's part of the gear to have a water bottle. I actually have three. Yeah, these are all the tickets. <laughs> That's a lot of tickets. <laughs> well, I just, I get my tickets far in advance because I'm always afraid I'm going to be sold out of a show. Oh, I carry binoculars. Those come in handy when there are celebrities. I think they're going to kick us out. I don't kick anyone out. Have you been drinking? Me? Yeah. No, not me. Oh. All right, it's well... Not, it's, not, it's not my house yet. Open bars at the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that. I really appreciate oh, no, that. You okay. I really appreciate that. Really yeah, well, you, I think we should try to get you tickets and stuff. All right, so I'll see you... Uh, when tomorrow. You tomorrow. 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 Yeah, are you doing the night? I'm here. Okay, I'll see you. All right, Jeff. A strong element of art is connected to understanding, right? I want to understand the works better, I want to appreciate them better, but I think what I'm after in the case of art is something like pleasure or ecstasy. It sort of transcends the cognitive. Tomorrow I have a screening uh, in the afternoon, and then after that, I probably have to go do more schedule. 
more scheduling. I'm totally behind on all that. But now it's going to be easier that my class ended. It was a philosophy of mind and language at Columbia. Yeah, oh yeah, I feel captive by having a schedule because, you know, like I'd like to have the free time. I'd like to be have the free time to do whatever it is I want to do at any given moment, you know. So whether it's like have a specific discussion or read a specific book or have sex with a specific girl. <laughs> but, uh, but I can't always do that because of the schedule. But the paradox is, is that if I didn't have a schedule, I probably would be less happy. I don't spend a lot of time suffering from my captivity. Whereas I think some people who have jobs that they don't like really are. They really would be happier doing other things. And they, and they can't.